Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths, both to refresh the body and to make it easy for the mind to stay with the breath. So you notice where you feel the process of the breathing. Keep that up as long as deep breathing feels good. When it feels like it's too much, then you can adjust it. But try to keep it strong enough so you can stay focused on it. If your focus is very precise, that doesn't have to be all that strong. But when you're starting out, it's good to have a breath that you can stay with. It's not too refined, otherwise you get lost. We're training the mind, we want to observe the mind. And to do so, you need a place to focus the mind. Because the mind is in focus, then you don't know where you're going to watch it. But when you focus on the breath, at the very least you've got a place where you can compare the movements of the mind. It's like watching the movements of clouds. You see some clouds moving one direction, other clouds moving in another direction. You can't be sure if you're just watching, looking up in the sky, which clouds are standing still and which ones are moving. But if you've got something on the ground, or connected to the ground, like a tree or a telephone pole or the top of a roof, you can focus there and then you can notice the movements of the clouds, which ones are moving, which ones are standing still. And it's the same with the mind. There are lots of movements going on in the mind right now. And if you want to see them clearly, you have to have a spot against which you can measure them. So take the breath as that spot, your sense of the energy in the body as you feel it from within. You can focus anywhere. It feels comfortable. Some people find it natural to focus in the head, others find it more natural to focus down in the chest. If you find that focusing in the head gives you a headache, then you don't focus there. Start down at the neck and then move down. Wherever you focus, think of the breath energy coming in and out of the body right there, so you don't have to be pulling it from anywhere. We're thinking here of the breath as the energy, not so much the air coming in and out of the lungs, but the energy that brings the air in and then allows it to go out. It's kind of like the tide rising and falling in the body. To start out at one spot. When that spot gets comfortable, you do have to expand your awareness. You might, if you're in, focused on the head, think of the whole head. And the chest, think of the whole torso. You need a larger frame of reference so that you don't lose your focus as the breath gets more refined. And it's important that whatever feelings of ease and well-being come up, you don't focus your primary attention on them. You notice that they're there, but they're not your focus. The focus has to be the energy, the quality of the energy, because eventually it's going to grow still. And if all you can think about breathing is in and out breathing, then you're up a creek. But if you realize, okay, there is a still energy that permeates the body. And as long as your frame of reference is large enough, you can hold that still energy in mind. And that can be your reference. Just the simple sense of having a body here, the presence of the body. And whether the energy is moving or not, after all, that becomes irrelevant. You've got your foundation. And you'll see that the mind will 
stay there for a while, and then it has the habit of moving off, it'll move. And sometimes the movements are simply there because the mind is so used to moving. It doesn't feel right to settle down. But you have to keep reminding it, this is where you want to stay because things can develop when you stay. If you don't stay right here, they don't develop. It's like planting a tree. If you want the tree to grow, you leave it in one spot. If you plant it here and then you say, whoops, there's the sun has moved, the shade has moved, you've got to keep it in the sun, you take it out of the shade and replant it someplace in the sun. And then after all the shade extends there and you dig it up again and you move it someplace else where there's sun, the tree's going to die. You realize that it has its time in the shade, it has its time in the sun, that's okay, as long as its roots get a place to settle down. That's the important thing. You want your mind to be rooted. Have a sense of awareness that feels like it belongs here. Because when you're going to watch the movements of the mind, you'll find that the first thing you do is you just jump, jump into them and go off. And that's what you've been doing all along. And so you need something to resist that, that sense of being firmly rooted right here. That's one of the ways in which full body awareness helps. As long as you maintain your awareness as broad as possible. It's too big to jump into those little thought worlds. It's when your awareness is focused in a small spot. It can just slip into the tiniest little thought world and go off. So keep your awareness broad, keep it larger than the thought worlds that come floating through. And that's when you can observe them. You look at them from outside. The Buddha said that he got on the right path when he was able to observe his thoughts. Not so much as to their content, as, but more as to what was motivating them. Where they were coming from and then where they would lead, in the sense of what impact they would have on the mind. And you notice there the thoughts of sensuality, thoughts of ill will, thoughts of harmfulness. Those would have a bad impact. Thoughts of renunciation, or goodwill, and harmlessness, those would have a good impact. And so he did his best to drop the unskillful thoughts. When you think about it, being mindful of mind states, all too often you hear, well, it's just a matter of watching whatever comes and whatever goes and learning how to be okay with whatever comes and goes. But the Buddha never taught that. He said, if anything unskillful comes up in the mind, you have to use all your mindfulness to get rid of it. In other words, try to remember that it's necessary to get rid of it and that you're not going to slip into it. And also remembering whatever techniques you've, ever, you've used in the past that have gotten results. That's what mindfulness means there, this quality of memory. And you <clears throat> use your alertness and your ardency and all your other skillful qualities to make sure that that unskillful state doesn't take root. He said it's the same as when your head is on fire. You don't just sit there and look at the flames and notice, oh, there's the red and there's the yellow and there's the heat. and the... You're going to die. You've got to put out the fire right away. And so a greed, aversion, and delusion come into the mind. You want to be able to put them out. And one of the advantages of staying with the breath like this is you see them when they're small sparks. There's tiny little flames just beginning to get started. And you can snuff them out before your head catches on fire. And so you try to keep these unskillful thoughts in check. As for skillful thoughts, you can think them. But if you think about them all day and all night, the mind gets tired. This is why the mind needs a place to rest. 
Because when the wine starts getting tired, it can slip very easily back into its unskillful states. So the concentration here is needed. Full body awareness is needed. So you can watch these things from the outside, and you have a place to measure their movements. Something to measure the movements against. So you can see them when they're small, when they're just little tiny flames, little tiny sparks. Little stirrings right at the border between your sense of the body and your sense of awareness. If you can catch them then, they're not going to be any trouble. So if you want to know your mind, get it focused, and then use it from the focus, fill the whole body with your awareness. And then you really get to know the mind, what it's like when it's still, when the movements come, and how you can begin to recognize from a movement whether it's going to be skillful or not, something worth following or not. And you're more in control. As the Buddha said, one of the advantages of training the mind is that you think any thought you don't. <coughs> excuse me. You think any thought you want to think, and you don't have to think any thought you don't. Which means you need a place to stand outside of your thoughts so you can judge them in time. And you're in a position where you can use your tools to extract yourself from anything that's going to take you in a direction you don't want to go. That's what it means to be mindful of what's going on in the mind.